I got some samples and I know y'all enjoy these sampling series videos and boy do I have some thoughts so let's get on into it. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel everyone. Now these Santa Maria here yes we're doing a sampling series video because I got some new samples in from Twisted Lily. You all know that is my go-to place for samples and as always I do have a code for you all so if you want a sample for yourself you know test in your own time you can do that too. So let's get into it as always I have one two three four five fragrance samples. All of these are niche fragrance and ooh, some of these I've been wanting to try. Some of these I've already had preconceived thoughts on, but we're gonna see if my thoughts were debunked or not. So we shall see. But as always, lipstick of the day today, everyone. I decided to go in with a favorite and this is MAC Mare lipstick. It's a blue-based pink is what it is, or it might be mauve to some people's eyes or camera settings type of thing. That's what I'm rocking. And as always, details on the makeup will be in the description box below as always. So you don't have to ask questions about it. <laughs> Next up, we have Fragrance of the Day. I'm very happy about this one because ooh, this is the newest release from the house of Memo Paris. And this is Memo Paris Cappadocia, you all. So check this out, Cappadocia right here. This was kindly sent over to me from Twisted Lily. You all know I've been on a memo kick. And when I saw this one, and particularly the notes of Cappadocia, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna need that one for sure in my collection some way or somehow. So it looked out. But since this is a new release and new to my collection, and some of you all have asked me questions about this fragrance, if I was gonna check it out or not, now you have your answer, your girl has a full bottle. So this one has, the main note in this one is saffron. If you are a saffron lover, Cappadocia is going to be right up your alley. Key notes are saffron, sandalwood oil, and myrrh resonoid. There's also some jasmine absolute in here. We have orris butter, rose absolute. We have some olibanum, we have some benzoin, and we have some vanilla in here. So I've had it for a few days and I've been enjoying this one. I've worn it a couple of times, so this is a first impression, not a dedicated review, but in a nutshell, it's like creamy, but sweet, but most importantly, saffron. So those are the main things I'm getting from the scent. You all know, full dedicated review will happen on this scent at a later date after I spend some more time with it. But I did want to go ahead and talk about it now because I know you all have asked me about it. So those are my initial first impressions on Memo Paris' Cappadocia. Again, thank you to Twisted Lily for sending this over to me. And yeah, we'll be talking about it later on. Mm -hmm. And now for what you came for, which is my thoughts on these fragrances. So the first fragrance that we're going to talk about, this sample, this is from MFK, you all, and this is 724. If you all recall, 724 came out in the fall of 2022. That was probably the most controversial release of MFK to my memory because it was met with a lot of mixed reviews, <laughs> for sure. I remember the day it launched, I went and smelled it and I was like, that's it when I first smelled this scent. So let's see after smelling it, of course, in store versus having an official sample and able to really wear it and play with it on my body and all that. Which by the way, let me say that too. When it comes to these sampling videos, old elves know this, but the new elves, I always test fragrances on my skin before I come on camera and talk about them. So no, this isn't just a, oh, I sprayed it on paper one time and I'm just gonna talk about it. No, I've actually worn these. So these are my real thoughts, first impressions on these scents. So back to the fragrance though. 724, we have notes of aldehydes, then we have Calabrian bergamot, middle notes are Egyptian jasmine, we have orange, and then we have sweet pea, and then we have base notes of white musk and sandalwood. So with this fragrance, and of course, this is what the samples look like. And of course, you always see a picture of what it looks like on the inside. I do appreciate how generous of a spray the sample is, and I have it on here. So let me tell you something about this scent. Now, this is one of those fresh and clean scents, which a lot of people kind of write those off because they assume, you know, they're gonna be weak, they're gonna be gone in like 10 minutes and you just smell like soap out of the shower, right? Let me say this, this scent, what I get absolutely the aldehydes, this is a clean and fresh scent. Please make no mistake about it. It is clean and fresh. But for me, what saves this is the white musk and the sweet pea note, because I love a good sweet pea, which is a flower. I enjoy it and the white musk is very clean in this, but let me tell y'all something about this fragrance that shocked me. So spraying it again, I said, okay, clean and fresh. Like I remember when I first smelled it two years ago, right? But this time, see, when you get a sample, you can actually wear it and really test it. Tell me why y'all 724 actually lasts all day. I kid you not. I mean, on my skin as well as my fabric. I was like, wait. This is a clean scent and no, I did not retouch it. I didn't walk around with the sample on me in my purse during that day and whatnot. I sprayed it on in the morning, lived my life, do what I needed to do. I could still smell it that evening when I was getting ready to take my evening shower. I said, wait a minute. This scent is actually, you know, good. And especially for it being an MFK, which means a niche fragrance with a niche price tag. 
this one actually goes the distance. So that alone changed my opinion about the scent because I like the fragrance because yes, I like clean and fresh scents. Y'all seen me talk about clean and fresh all the time on the channel. That's nothing new. But the longevity of this scent, I gotta give it its flowers on. 724 actually lasts. And dare I say, yes, this is full bottle worthy. I gotta give it its credit. I think I want a bottle of this for the summertime because this really lasts. This will make an excellent travel scent for somebody that has to like say, take two plane trips to get to their vacation destination and you know you want to smell good the whole way even when it's hot and all that this would be perfect for that so mfk 724 is a absolute yes full bottle worthy and that again is mason francis kirk john's 724 and staying in the house of mfk this was another one i've been wanting to smell because i already own the original version of this and this is a flanker to this fragrance and this is mason francis kirk john's and this is low a la rose right here yes low a la rose the main difference i see is that this is an edt and i do have the original a la rose for those that know the original a la rose is an EDP, so Eau de Parfum. So I immediately noticed that, but the notes are slightly different. And that's why I was like, let me see, okay, do I also want a bottle of Lo Alla Rose? Since I do have, again, a full bottle of the original Alla Rose. So let's get into the notes, y'all, of Lo Alla Rose, same setup. And there is what the bottle looks like on the inside. So it has top notes are lychee and pear. Then we have middle notes of damask rose, grassy rose, peony, violet, and we have base note of a musk. And then when I did my research on this fragrance too, I saw that it came out five years after the original. So I said, hmm, interesting on that. So that's why I say Lo Alla Rose is a flanker so y'all let me tell you what i actually got from this scent <sighs> i do get the lychee and then after that it's just rose water so it's lychee and rose water and i gotta say this is even lighter than the original and spoiler alert for those that may not know i do have a dedicated review to the original a la rose and one of the things that is i need to know about this line is that it's meant to be light wearing it's meant to be very very much a skin scent and some kind way they've managed to take the already very light wearing original a la rose and they've made the low a la rose that we're talking about right now they've made this even lighter so here's the thing i sprayed this on myself and in 30 minutes to an hour i could not smell it anymore i could not <laughs> and it essentially smells like rose water that you can probably find at say like a bath and body works right anybody that sells body mist meaning something not too expensive so in my opinion do i think low a la rose is worth it i would have to say no unless you just absolutely love this scent profile i do not think this is worth the money and then on top of that in my case i already have the original version. So to me, I don't need the flanker of this. I don't because the flanker is even softer than the original. And I already have to bathe in the original version to get any type of longevity out of it. So why would I go from an EDP to the EDT, which is gonna be even worse performing? So for me, this is a no. Low Isle Rose, it's cute, but it ain't MFK price tag cute. I don't need it. So it's a no for me. And that again is MFK's Lo A La Rose. And now we're gonna switch gears and go to the house of Zerjoff, you all, which you all know, me and Zerjoff have been in a relationship lately. We've been in a good relationship for about the past six months. I gotta give Zerjoff its credit. Now this is one, I've actually smelled this before, but I was more enamored with another fragrance from the same house that I couldn't really get all the way into this one. So this is why we sample. So next up from the house of Zerjoff, you all, this is one that's finally available everywhere. And this is Zerjoff's. Via Cavour 1. Yes, Via Cavour 1. Yes, this was once in their exclusive collection that was like only sold, I wanna say, in a particular boutique if I really wanna get deep dive into it. So this one was not massively available until recently. Really, I wanna say 2024. Remember, if you all recall, I did mention that I was able to smell this scent when I went to Perfumology back in February when I was in Philadelphia. But alas, I fell in love with Torino number 22 from that trip. And this one was in the background, but I still want to come back to it. And I told y'all, I said, I think I'm gonna need to revisit that one because there's a lot of notes in it that I really wanna give it a chance to develop. So I kept my word and here we are. Let's talk about the notes of this fragrance because that's what intrigued me the most, y'all. So notes in Via Cavour 1, we have notes of quince and white peach. Then we have absolute rose from Morocco and then dark chocolate. And lastly, we have caramel and vanilla from Madagascar. Yeah. This is tart peaches and quinces. We got rose. We got dark chocolate, we got some caramel, vanilla. So it's kind of giving me fruity, but fruity gourmand is what I'm getting from this. I'm like, okay, let's see. I love dark chocolate, by the way, as a snack. I, I love a good dark chocolate moment, just like a little square of it. So that's another reason why I was interested in this. So 
But what is this scent actually giving me? It's the quince note. And then y'all on skin, the dark chocolate comes out on skin. And then the vanilla and the caramel helps to smooth things out. Y'all, this is, whew, this is sexy. This is sexy, y'all. And then as I read further into like their long paragraph they have written up about it, I think there's also a little bit of oud in here too. I don't get that, but mainly I get the quince, I get the dark chocolate, and I get the vanilla. So this is fruity, but also gourmandy, and I love this one. This one, this one might be, my, this one is giving date night. This one's giving date night, it's giving romance, and this is wow. And the closest thing to this scent that I can reference, because again, this is a scent that's just now becoming more readily available. So a lot of people are probably like, okay, what else does it possibly kind of smell like? Just in case they don't get a sample, or again, you can't get a sample from Twisted Lily like I did. The closest thing that I can say that's kind of similar to it is because they both have the quince note in it. And there is a chocolate note in here, cacao or chocolate, so somewhat. I'm gonna say this, if you enjoy BDK's Pass Soir, the X-ray version, I am about 95% sure you will also enjoy Vehicle War One. I'm not saying they are the same, I'm not saying they're dupes, whatever you wanna call it, but I'm saying scent profile. That's what I'm saying. However, this has a more, this one is a little bit more smooth. It's not as thick as of course BDK's X-ray perfume is supposed to be that. This one is a little bit more sultry, it's a little bit more, Hmm, it just has that quintessential Zerzhoff blend. I highly recommend getting a sample of this one if you can, because just smelling it and passing, like I told you, I was like, okay, maybe, I don't know, but wearing it, yes, it comes alive on skin, yes. The dark chocolate comes alive especially. So Via Cavour One, it's a yes. I need a bottle of this for sure. Absolutely gotta have a bottle of this one. I'm glad I revisited this one because it definitely did what it needs to do. And that again is Zerjas Aviva Cour 1. All right, the last two are from the same house and that is Memo Paris, so let's get into it. This next one, several of you all, yes, you all, the elves, recommended this one to me. So yes, I got a sample of it. And this is Lila Bella. Yes, Lila Bella. I've seen so many people say how this one is amazing. You gotta get your nose on it, it's fantastic. And to be fair, y'all have shown me that y'all got the full bottle. So I'm like, okay, it's one thing to just say something's cute. It's another thing when I keep seeing it on vanities and I keep seeing y'all pull it out and like, no, we got the full bottle, it's that good. I'm like, okay, you put your money where your mouth is. So all right, let's get into it. So Layla Bella, we have main notes. We got Rose Absolute, we have Oil of Indonesian Patchouli and Frankincense, and then we have Coconut Accord, Jasmine Absolute, Rock Rose Absolute, Vanilla, Tobacco Absolute and Labdanum Resin. So reading this, I was like, okay, I really don't know where this is gonna go because we got frankincense going on, but we also got coconut. And then I see rose, so I'm just, I see some tobacco. I'm like, I don't know what this is gonna do, but one thing about Memo, they always take you on a journey and I see it a million times on this channel. So let me tell you what I actually got from this scent. Absolutely, this is a scent I had to wear on skin for me to get it. Cause to just spray it, I was like, oh, okay. But y'all on skin, and even now that my nose is trained, it is the coconut accord that shines through. And it's, this is the perfect quintessential scent to me of a transition from spring to summer because it has the floralness because of the rose in here, but that coconut, oh, the coconut shines through. But then there's the resins in here, the frankincense that gives it character. Oh, I see why y'all like this one. This don't smell like nothing else. This isn't a basic rose scent. The coconut actually comes out of nowhere and that's why I was like, well, cause I first sprayed this on me. I didn't know what to expect. I just sprayed it and what about my day? And all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, this is character. And y'all know I am here for fragrances that have character. So Layla Bella, absolutely. This is giving me May, June. This is giving me May, May or June, mm-hmm. I like this and the performance is excellent. That's one thing I'm glad about with Memo. I know that you gotta let it dry down and have patience because oh, it takes you on a journey. And this was a journey I was willing to go on and I'm here for it. I see why y'all hype Layla Bella up. I'm on board with it. This is a full bottle worthy, so yes. Memo Paris's Layla Bella. And for last, we have more of an OG. This one's been around for a minute from my understanding. So the next fragrance we're gonna talk about, the last one, this is French leather. Yes, this is French leather. Now this one I see more ladies talk about, so I was like, okay, cool because I have smelled some of the other leathers that they have. I've smelled Moroccan leather, African leather, which by the way, I love African leather on a man in particular, the head elf. He wore it the other day. Yes, 
Let me just say that African leather is the one for the me. But back to the ladies though. French leather. Y'all have said this was really good. Some of my fragrance friends. So I said, okay, let me check it out. So we have main notes of lime essence, rose essence, and suede accord. Then we also have pink pepper essence, juniper essence, clary sage, coriander, styrix, resin, vetiver, and musk. So that's okay. Looking at this, I'm like, interesting. So I was like, okay, this isn't just straight up French and leather. There's other things going on here. The main note in here that was kind of like, wait, where are we going with this is the lime. But I'm like, let's see. So let's get into it. Believe it or not, the lime is what makes this scent different because otherwise this would have been just a spicy rose scent to me. And I was kind of like, I don't know. This was a scent that I preferred it an hour later versus when I first sprayed it on me. It's definitely one of those. Cause then it became a suede rose that did just enough where this could actually be somebody's signature scent once it dried down. Because that opening was like, woof, hit you in the nose. It does, it does. But once it dried down, I was like, okay, now I get the hype. Cause at first I was like, wait a minute, y'all lied to me. What is this? <laughs> then it dried down, I was like, okay. It is giving what the girl said it was supposed to give. So this was a slow burn. It was not a little bit first snip. This was a, oh, I fell in love with it eventually. It's one of those. So French leather, she cute. I may get her maybe more so when we hit it into fall. So I think like September, that's when I'll probably get a bottle of her. But I do understand why the ladies enjoy this one. She has personality, I'm digging it. And that again is Memo Paris's French leather. So all right, everyone, that wraps up my thoughts on these fragrance samples that again, I received from Twisted Lily. Remember to use my code if you also want a sample. Y'all know this, I tell y'all to sample because yay, everybody and their mama might love it, but then you get it and you may hate it. And we rather just sample it versus blind buy a bottle that we hate. So that is why I do these videos so you all can see in real time how I feel about scents. Again, some of them are newer, some of them are old. I like a good healthy mix of just what I'm interested in. And plus you all recommend things to me all the time to get my nose on. So I try to do that. So those are my thoughts. Let me know if you smelled any of these scents that I have talked about today and what are your opinions on them? Definitely leave it in the comments below, which I know y'all gonna do that anyway. But then yes, I will read them and respond when I can. So all right, y'all, I will catch you on the next video. Bye everyone.